Hello, I'm Andy King. I'm the technical editor of Good Woodworking Magazine, and I'm going to show you how to be sharpening saws for getwoodworking.com. Okay, so basically, what you need to do is to lock your saw into something firm that keeps everything rigid, and this is a pretty much a traditional way of doing it. It's called, well, saw chops, they're always known as down this neck of the woods, I don't know where else they're called, but uh, certainly. Traditionally, what it used to be was you'd cut a V into a standard piece of timber, put a hole there. So when these are banged in, then the hole in effect would resist the split in effect. So it would mean that everything would be tight in the top, it would be wedged in, and it would clamp the blade tight. Now, this is a variation on a theme which I use. Uh, I've hinged it. It's on a couple of little wing nuts. And also, well, the principle is basically that, although you don't have to take these off now, but you can you can hinge it right apart so your saw sits in between the two. And what I've also done on these, these two battens that hold the blade, when they're together, you can't really see it so much. You can see it down this end now, but you can see it just about there if I squeeze it. It's gap there, gap there. So I've actually give it a slight crowning effect in the middle. So when the blade's in there, until these are clamped up, everything then all comes together. If you do it it's tight all the way through, the tendency is the middle bit never gets any clamping on it. You can put a clamp in the middle, but that eliminates the need. So it's just a matter of just planing these faces just slightly out of whack. Just enough so that when it comes in, then when these are nipped up, everything's clamped right away tight all the way through. Uh, you've got a situation on the handle end here. Now this area is determined by the blade you put in, the saw you put in. So you can find that some saws will go in perfectly well. and they'll slide right the way through, so they're clamped right the way back down through there, and the battens hold right away the end. But another maker saw, you might find it won't go in, so this little tenon saw for instance, when you want to be right the way down the end where you need to be, because the brass back is hitting there, then you need to either break that out, or you can get yourself another set of chops to do the job. Because otherwise, if you're up there, what you've got is this last little bit isn't supported, and that's going to be a little bit hard to file. It will give a lot of resistance against the file because it's got a lot of depth there to play against. And you're pushing against that and it will bend away easy, especially on a thin plate saw like this. So that really, that end there is just a matter of you, you cut that to suit the saw you're putting in. And you may find you've got to jig it around. But it's just as easy to, because these are only screwed on these, these chops, you can just make yourself another set and just alternate them for whatever you need. So it's a very simple thing to make. That's all it is basically is just a couple of bits of 4B2, some battening housed in, a couple of hinges, and a couple of bits of deep batten to hold it on. And that's pretty much it. Um, bevel the top faces so that it gives you a little bit of room with your file so you're not banging your knuckles. And also if you do ever decide to go down the route of flame filing, which is a, a far trickier principle, which we won't even touch on at the moment, then if you go down that route, then that gives you the opportunity to drop the file and file upwards. And that way then it gives you a real needle point on the, on the teeth if you need to go down that route again. But it's a, it's a method that is, well, unheard of nowadays, to be perfectly honest. And that's fling filing. That's fling filing, yeah. Again, it's, it's a, depending on where you go and who you speak to, it's, it's, a, it's not. Because the fling, in some people's eyes, is, is the rake of the file that way. So when you file across, the introduction of the file going across the tooth, that, that is called a fleam by some people. Fleam to me was always that. I was always told that fleam filing was dropping the handle, giving you basically a compound angle on the front of the tooth, which is, which is your fleam. So that's that. So you, you, you basically got, uh, you've got pitch, pitch of the tooth, which is that angle there, which determines that point there. That's your pitch. Uh, also you've got the rake, I've, I've been taught the rake angle is that, which other people will call you the fleam. That is the rake angle, the actual rake you put across the tooth. You can call a rake that. It's, it's ever so many different ways of looking at it. You can call it anything you like. It, it's, it's six of one half a dozen of the other. At the end of the day, as long as you get your saw sharp, who cares? That's what really counts. 